Republicans are pushing to repeal a new law that requires background checks before most firearm sales in New Mexico, including between private individuals. Now, opponents say it interferes with Second Amendment rights, and they filed a petition to put the legislation directly in front of voters through a rarely used referendum process. Secretary of State Maggie Toulouse Oliver denied it, citing a constitutional prohibition on using that referendum process to repeal public safety laws. But Republicans now say that's a decision the courts have to make. That just happened this week, and joining us to discuss this new development is this week's opinion panel. Starting with Justine Fox Young, a former state representative and local attorney. Tom Garrity of the Garrity Group PR is here and a regular on this program. Also with us is Harry Van Buren, a professor in the Anderson School of Management at UNM. And Gian Giovanna Rossi is here, president of Collective Action Strategies and host of KUNM's Well Woman Show. And Giovanna, House Republican leader Jim Townsend seems ready to go to court to get this on the 2020 ballot which is the crux of this. Even if he's successful, New Mexicans have only used this once in, uh, since 1930. The referendum repeal of law passed by the legislature, do you think 2020 will mark the second time this could potentially happen? What's the potential here to have this actually turned around? Yeah, I mean, we've only seen this happen once before and it was a uh, cigarette tax, I believe. So mm -hmm. um, usually these referendums are used for taxes. Um, right. it, it's an interesting thing though. It, it, there's a disconnect clearly between mm -hmm. our representatives who voted on this and passed it and the governor signed it right. and and what the people might do, right? So mm -hmm. I, I don't think that it will, um, I, I don't think it would pass if it went. Mm -hmm. But, you know, who knows? We have to wait and see. It, yeah. It's so rarely used that it's going, I think it's going to get tied up in the courts mm -hmm. for a while, mm -hmm. although some of the other folks can weigh in on that from mm -hmm. a legal perspective. But um, I, I just think it's interesting, a, a real big disconnect when we have to pull in this mm. um, referendum. Mm -hmm. Interesting point there. Tom, your initial top, top line uh, uh, view here. What happened here? That you know, we, we saw what happened. And Giovanna just mentioned the governor passed. Uh, sorry, signed that bill. Mm -hmm. is, is the ship sailed? Is it too late now, or was this you know? Yeah. Well, that's that's know. where the difficult thing is. Is yeah, you had legislators who protested. Uh, right. You had the governor who signed the legislation, and now you have a protest that has been since quelled by the Secretary of State, mm -hmm. which might be problematic because you know the protest was filed about let something that could become a bill mm -hmm. as opposed to something that was already law when mm -hmm. it was submitted but also the issue is difficult um, right. as a as someone who supports gun rights mm -hmm. um, I'm I can't get behind what this petition is for because it just makes common sense to go ahead and you know have background checks on all gun sales regardless right. uh, and so the topic itself is really hard to get around which is why I think if it does get on the ballot it's gonna be very difficult to get repealed interesting point there agree I mean, I would, I would degree of difficulty agree. here if it makes it on the ballot? I mean, if it makes it on the ballot, yeah. but if you look at the merits of the uh, issue, it's really been interesting to see the reaction of some of the counties to declare themselves yes. Second Amendment uh, mm -hmm. uh, sanctuaries. But we're not talking about getting rid of a class of guns. We're talking about a very, very mild sort of thing, which, by the way, has enormous public support pretty much across the uh, country. Mm -hmm. It is, as Tom pointed out, just a common sense sort of thing. Right. So it seems to me that this is an opportunity to try to uh, gin up some uh, support uh, for uh, folks in the uh, Republican you know, uh, uh, Party. And it's not to say that there aren't some people that have sincere concerns about this issue, but it's so mild compared with the other possible forms of gun control that could be out there. Mm -hmm. On the merits, it's just going to be very, very difficult to pass. Interesting point there. They're coming fast behind this one. I mean, I think that's mm -hmm. the concern. Mm -hmm. and, and when you look at the opposition that's fomented, um, you know, one man's mild public safety bill is another's, you know, total fear of government sure. control. Sure. And the I, slippery slope argument, you know, that kind of a thing. And, well, you know. I, mean, I, I think some people see this as a serious incursion. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, they're, they're expecting more, expecting more next session. This governor has sure. said to expect more. Um, but I, I guess I just quote Marissa <clears throat> Tomei. You know, Maggie Toulouse Oliver and the proponents of this bill, this legislation, certainly are, are winning right now. You know, it will mm -hmm. be litigated. I think there are valid legal arguments on both sides. Mm -hmm. I could anticipate how it might come out. Um, but, but sometimes when you win, you really lose. That's what Marissa Tomei says in White Men Can't Jump. Sometimes when you mm -hmm. lose, you really win. Sometimes <laughs> you actually tie. Um, 
There is a nice. groundswell of opposition, and I, yeah. I think this could make the difference in six to eight legislative seats, uh -huh. all the way up the ticket. This is a huge issue. I'm not a political consultant, sure. but I, I, I'm certain that there are political consultants out there who would say this is an issue <clears> the <throat> Republicans want to lose now and win later. Mm -hmm and um, we'll be able to build tremendous support out of this. Interesting point there. Giovanna, let me read you a little excerpt out of the letter that um, Representative Townsend uh, had, <clears throat> had uh, I mentioned earlier. Um, neither the secretary, in, in part, neither the Secretary of State nor the Attorney General has the authority to unilaterally, unilaterally determine if a given piece of legislation meets the public peace, health, and safety standard described in the New Mexico Constitution. It's an interesting point he's trying to make there that it, are these folks the right authority outside of the courts to be the last stop on this decision? Would you, uh, is, is, is he right there? I want to ask all of you this, this very question, by the way, so yeah. Uh, well, I think it's it's in it's within the Secretary of State's purview to make that decision, and she's right. made that decision. Right. If they want to challenge it, they can. I mean, mm. you know, I think we're just going through the process. Right. But good for her for pulling that, you know, out mm. because it, it it makes sense. We're talking about public health, health, public health, public yeah. peace, health, and safety, public Tom. Health. You know what I mean? So there's an idea there that, you know, she may not be the appropriate person to, to determine those particular issues what determines public health. You see what I mean? There's a little wiggle room, it seems to me here, that these folks might have oh, if, yeah. they, if they go to court here on this thing. Yeah, I mean, it, I think you could make a case on both sides that perhaps the Secretary of State really overextended her reach right. as far as, you know, interpreting law. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and that's really something for the courts and for the judiciary. Particularly right. because that language doesn't even appear in the bill. I mean, there's no mention of public safety in the bill. No, yeah, but it's, it's a she perception points within her She points to... So the legislative history, and makes the which isn't law in this state, mm. um, you know, it's the plain meaning. And so to the question of whether she's the appropriate person, mm -hmm. I mean, she's reading language into the, the bill. It's not there. Mm -hmm. well, well, it would that it make, doesn't have to be in the bill, in, in the language in the bill, to know that gun safety is a public health issue. And, and it was part of the debate. Point. The courts will decide it. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. That's an interesting point there, Harry. That mm -hmm. It was part of the debate. So yeah. it may not be there in language yeah. in the bill, but it's understood. It's not literally it's, you know, uh, in the language of the bill, but it's yeah. pretty clear that that was what the legislative intent was uh, was about. Right. And that's really what the whole debate uh, was, was about. And again, we're talking about a very, very mild you know, form of, uh, of gun control. It's not really even a form of uh, gun control. You know, right. in some sense, it's talking about you know, closing a, a particular uh, a loophole. So I think right. it's going to be very, very hard you know, to make uh, the argument that this is like a massive mm -hmm. you know, a, a constitutional uh, issue. Uh, now, clearly, the courts are going to wind up deciding that. Right. But it strikes me that that's something that is with, uh, within Oliver's uh, purview. I mean, mm -hmm. she's the election official. Right. Tom, you know, this idea that, you know, one could, you know, reach back to some, ar I don't want to call it arcane, but some piece of, you know, referendum idea that one could use. Is this the beginning of something? Do you, do you sense that perhaps folks are going to be looking at that, this whole thing saying, oh, this fits under this idea. We could perhaps blow it up using this idea. Yeah, you know, you, know, you, right. you have an umbrella that's big enough, right. you're going to be able to get a lot of people <laughs> under that umbrella. Exactly. You know, I think what, uh, you know, another issue that, that I see coming out of all of this mm -hmm. is really the difficulty <clears throat> of the referendum process in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a system that's really designed to keep out uh, anyone who wants to challenge the system. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, that goes to uh, candidates who want to run for public office. You have to be a part of the Republican, Democrat, or now Libertarian Party, independents. That's right. Okay, it's a lot more difficult for you. Right. Mm -hmm. um, then the same thing with this, to get a certain percentage of the, uh, of the you know, signatures mm -hmm. in order to get this on the ballot, and then to, which it appears that they were able to do, mm -hmm. and then to have it taken, you know, have a Secretary of State who, in her own mind, you know, made the decision that was given to her mm -hmm. um, to say no that doesn't apply you know it just shows that you know the referendum process really should be revisited will it probably not right good point let's talk about the politics good well but that frustration mm -hmm. and that energy will go somewhere oh absolutely and, and by the way we should clarify this is, and we've talked about this before it's really not a partisan issue at all um, and so you ask if the ship has sailed I mean to see some of these Democrats out front and center 
strongly supporting this legislation. It's going to be interesting to see what sort of blowback there is because mm -hmm. there is many Democrats lined up on the other side as there are Republicans. And mm -hmm. Yeah, and playing off of what Justine was Please. saying earlier is, yeah. is that there is a lot of, as a result of this, there's a lot of displaced aggression. Right. Mm -hmm. And how is that displaced aggression, my words, not yours, how is that going to mm -hmm. play out in the electorate? I think it's accurate. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, because right. people are looking for somebody to blame. And it's not just because, you know, the, they don't agree with the law. They don't agree with their voice not being heard. Right. And that's what I think the legislators will ultimately yeah. have to reconcile. Right. Giovanna, you know, we, let me, a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago, Justine was here. We talked about uh, the rising power of sheriffs, not just across the country, mm -hmm. but here in New Mexico. It's part of a wave right now. And we, we, you know, they have some authority, of course. We have to list their law enforcement in those areas. They feel like this thing is not going to solve any problems of gun violence and gun. Do you know what I mean? Isn't that an argument to be done during the legislative session? Isn't that the time to get a, try to get across that? Win the votes you need to win and get this thing to move on? Now that, it, now that it's passed, you know what I mean? How, how do you actually prove it's not going to do anything? It, 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 that's where I have a difficulty. With yeah, this. I mean, we, we have a, a legislative process, and I'm mm -hmm. sure they were active and, and sure. local. Sure. Oh, they were the there. Process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, so they had their, <laughs> they had their time then to, mm -hmm. to make their opinion known. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think that they probably needed to yeah. voice their opinion during the session. Yeah, it's never really over, Harry, is it? You know, politics it, being it what never, it is. It never right. is over. <laughs> well, and this is very much an issue that is incredibly emotive, and it's emotive for people right. on both sides. So uh, going to Justine's uh, point, uh, it's going to be motivating a lot of, you know, you know, anxiety, you know, concern, but it's going, going to be on both sides. Mm -hmm. And the challenge of this issue in the state is we really have two states. We have a very, very rural uh, state where guns, uh, I'm from a rural area, uh, and guns are perceived very differently th right. there than they are, say, in Albuquerque or Taos or uh, right. Santa Fe. That's right. And so behind this issue, I think, is also not just a political split, but there's also an urban uh, rural uh, split, mm -hmm. and that's really gonna work itself out. Appreciate that thought. That's all the time we have on that topic, but still to come this week on the line, New Mexico's new minimum wage.